Hey guys, uh, we just want to show you an example of stacking, what they call stacking in a Tintropic agroforestry system. It's actually, as opposed to monoculture, you can uh, stack or plant multiple types of produce on the same square metre of land. So if you just zoom your camera in a little bit and have a look, we've got our um, bananas up there, of course, which is stock standard in the system. But here we've got passion fruits also dra uh, cascading down the sides of the bananas here. And we didn't even plant these. These are just um, bird planted and volunteered by the birds. And if you notice down below, we've got dragon fruit growing up against the timber tree. So just over here, we have a pawpaw starting to produce. So within one or two square meters of land, we've got timber, we've got bananas, passion fruit, dragon fruit, and pawpaw. And God knows what else is in there. And this whole thing is feeding itself. As you can notice, the chop and drop material um, is the fertilizer and it's costing us nothing. We actually don't even irrigate this. This system hasn't been irrigated for at least one year now, or maybe more than that, maybe 12 mo 14 months. And this is a two year system. So this is the whole idea of Syntropics and why we believe it is a superior method because the amount of biomass and the produce available and the diversity of produce far exceeds just a straight field of monoculture or, for example, a field of cabbages. So that's why we're into this. And that's a classic example right there, just in a, a short one or two square meters. Not to mention the fruit trees, which will come online in two or three years. Right, so in this particular row, uh, we have mixed tropical fruit trees, jackfruits, guava, and um, rollenia, and custard apples. So in three, four, five, six years, we're gonna add those fruits on top of what we're producing in this 150 meter row. Mm. So it's, a, it's an awesome system. It's a syntropic as opposed to entropic. It feeds itself, it creates energy, builds energy and builds biomass, rather than leaching things out of the soil, requiring constant inputs. Mm. So there's a, our best argument in favor of a syntropic garden out at Canberra. You've got herbs in the middle here. And well. if you look down there, Diego, we've got herbs growing right along the row here. We have broccoli coming back, and this parsley has been in there for at least two years now and it likes the shade and that that kale would have been there for a while as the well cow, the kale is coming up two years old and so we're still picking so as you can see uh they went a bit rough last summer got attacked by some bugs but now it's cooled off and the kale loved winter it's grown back and there's nothing wrong with that kale you can pick the good stuff off that to sell it at the markets so in a very, very small space of land, we've got at least seven, eight, nine things that we can harvest. Now, just compare that with a typical monoculture uh, market garden. That you can harvest and need no inputs. Right. So it's diversity it's and less work. 